We are now going to call the Order and Finance Committee meeting to order. I want to take attendance. Everybody here this evening on this beautiful, beautiful day. Let's start over here. Rich Mendick, District 36. Uh, Mark Grimm, District 29. Lynn Lakakis, 8. Joe O'Brien, 25th, Loudonville, West Albany. Oh, Joe Clay, 12. Ray Joyce, 13. Paul Bergdorf, 23rd. Dave Mayo, 20, and Paul of Albany County. Oh. <laughs> You're right. All right, good evening. We want to get started here. I'm going to start by approving the previous minutes. Okay, I got a motion by Mr. Clay. I got a second by Mr. Pierce. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So should we, we Wanda, should we who weren't here abstain from the minutes? Pardon me? Should we who weren't here abstain from voting to approve the minutes? No, Not necessary? No okay, thank you. Just checking. So we're going to start by, we're going to uh, take the agenda out of order. We're going to start with number 10. And good evening, good evening yes, Madam sir. Chairwoman. How are you? Very good, very good, very good. Uh, so we're going to turn this to here. I'll amend it to 2019 District Attorney's Office Budget Administrative. Yes, ma'am. So on April 1st, uh, the New York State Legislature passed their budget, which included a whole host of criminal justice reforms that take effect on January 1st, 2020. Um, there are many that are going to affect multiple departments in Albany County. The biggest uh, financial impact that we foresee for the District Attorney's Office is in the area of discovery. and. The reason that is is because we've always had open discovery in our office. Any attorney who'd like to come in and view any information in a case that we were able to turn over, they're welcome to come and review it. Statutorily, we're required to turn over all discovery on a case um, prior to trial. And so the number of cases that go to full trial was you know, very slim. So we're talking maybe one to two percent of all cases in Albany County. So we were doing full discovery on one to two percent of the cases in terms of actually physically turning those documents and videos over. Uh, the new statute requires that we do 100 percent of discovery on 100 percent of cases within 15 days of an arraignment. Which means, and it also means, it's not just the documents that we have in our possession. We have constructive possession with the police departments. So if a police department um, makes a traffic stop, they have a video uh, body cam, they have a car cam, um, they make an arrest, so now there's also booking video at the police department. There are, dis uh, there's a 911 call, there's uh, dispatch audio on multiple um, channels from multiple departments. All of that must be gathered, collected, reviewed, redacted where appropriate, and turned over to the defense within 15 days. It's a massive um, restructuring, re-engineering of the criminal justice process uh, from top to bottom. And so we have uh, worked with the District Attorneys Association on the state level to see where um, the best practices are, where we can uh, shape uh, this new process. And we don't have a lot of answers yet. Where we do have questions, we have asked the state. They also, the, the uh, drafters of the bill, don't really have answers for us yet. And the best part is that it is completely 100% an unfunded mandate, yet again. So where we are at the moment is that we know that manpower is going to be a massive issue, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you about that um, in the next few meetings. Uh, for the full budget when it comes out. But currently what we'd like to do is focus on the technology needs that we think that we can appropriate right now to help us prepare. We have had multiple meetings with information services, with every police department in Albany County in terms of how we're gonna be transferring this data. Um, and we have determined that the best way for right now in the short term is to utilize an old 911 network that the Sheriff's Department set up. Um, they have their new 911 network now, 
and we can utilize the fiber that is connecting the county with uh, police departments in Albany County to transfer that information immediately uh, from the police departments to our office and then we can then transfer it to our partners in the criminal justice system public defender ultimate public defender conflict defender um, probation and so to do that we are asking that we move two hundred ninety thousand dollars and two hundred ninety thousand nine hundred dollars from current positions that have been vacant during the year uh, to our computer equipment budget so that we can purchase new switches for this network um, servers for storage because our storage fees are going to be massive uh, firewall to ensure that there is security uh, at every stage of this file transfer some USB backups uh, additional hardware and scanners that we will also need in all of our local courts as well as in the felony court um, like I said we have worked with information services this is not something that we're undertaking on our own we've also met with the county clerk uh, so that we can kind of cut down that paper that we are sending over to them that they can never destroy um, and move towards a uh, digital solution so this is where we currently are and the funds that we're looking to move tonight which is a budget neutral um, amendment will be used to start gearing up for those 2020 unfunded mandates Thank you. Are there any questions from the members, Mr. Bergdorf? Uh, I'm certainly going to support this. Uh, and I'm, hearing you talk about it, I'm starting to understand the enormity of the task at hand. Is there any guidance from the Office of Court Administration as to a transition period? Or what happens if you don't accomplish something by day 16. Is it, is it a fatal flaw? Is it? Yes. The answer is quite frankly, we don't know. What we anticipate is that um, different judges will be interpreting it in different ways. Uh, the sanction will be determined by the judge. They could say, you don't have everything, case dismissed. They could say, you don't have everything, okay, if you haven't given it to the defense by day 16, you can't use it at trial if you find it later on. Um, and we're not sure. OCA is having a training, is my understanding. I haven't been officially notified of this uh, on October 10th to train their staff because another component of this is pretrial services. Every defendant in Albany County has to be notified of their court date in advance. The county has to determine which agency that's going to be in the county. It's my understanding that there's discussions that it could be probation. It's also my understanding that in terms of misdemeanor courts that it might be the clerks in the local courts. But again, we don't know. There's no statewide guidance that we have seen. Any other questions? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I, this is concerning, uh, I'm, uh, it's possible murder her go free uh, if you don't meet the deadline in 15 days, and you're going from 2% to 100% discovery? Yes, sir. This is an unprecedented uh, request for information, leaving your office doing a bunch of information gathering rather than investigating. How will this impact how the DA office works in terms of uh, catching criminals? It's going to impact every single thing that we do on a daily basis. There's approximately 16,000 filings between felonies, misdemeanors, violations, and Albany County traffic tickets um, throughout Albany County um, every year. And right now, on a first appearance traffic ticket, you come in, you plead not, not guilty, you plead down to maybe parking on the pavement, you get a little bit of fine, everybody walks out. It's taken our office about three, four minutes to handle that case, and the case is disposed, disposed of, it's done. Under the new statute, we are not even allowed to engage in plea negotiations until discovery is complete, which means on a traffic ticket, we have to review and turn over body cam, dash cam, oh, all documents, review it, turn it over to the public defender's office or their private attorney, and then, and only then, oh. can we engage in plea negotiations. So not only is our, I mean, an, an employee has, you know, 1,820 hours in their day or in their year, right? If they don't take any bathroom breaks and they don't talk to any of their coworkers and they don't do any of those things. So just to review the body cam footage, say it's an hour on every case, we're talking 16,000 additional hours of time that we don't ha have the staff to do. Um, you know, I'd, in terms of the attorneys reviewing it on the other end, 
they don't have the stuff to do either. So literally from top to bottom, we are looking at how our office operates to see what can we do. Our, I mean, our current focus is going green, which is getting everything from the police departments digitally and then reviewing it digitally and then transferring it to the public defender's office digitally. It saves a little time in filing and you know, lugging those uh, court cases around and doing all that kind of thing, but not 16,000 hours worth of time. Yeah, no, I think it's a real threat to public safety to have this kind of crazy mandate, the way it will impact your office. It can't be good, and it's certainly not in the interest of my constituents. And I appreciate your frustration because it's an unvented mandate. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any questions? I'm not on the committee, but I so for every moving violation, you're saying that they have to provide discovery without demand. Yes. What when you say moving violation? Any well, speeding ticket or going ticket. through a stop sign. Anytime they're moving, you get a ticket. So this, this is. This is not at the felony or misdemeanor level. This is at the violation level. It's in the local court. Is that local right? court. If it's a criminal. So if you're speeding on the north If you're speeding on the north This is really crazy. If you're speeding, if I'm caught speeding on the north Who the hell wrote this law? The police department in 15 days has to provide the calibration of that speeding device that morning. Any video, any audio, any photos, literally anything that is any call ticket. Um, that exists because of that. Any 911 calls that maybe went to state police and then went to sheriff and then bounced back and forth five times because sometimes that tends to happen. Every single one of those has to be turned over, and if it doesn't, but then the judge. Could they used to be upon demand. You had to turn that over upon demand. Yes. You're saying was that without when, demand? Yes. Sir. Is that when you ask for a bill of particular? So, so basically, we, uh, yes, anything that, you, anything that you would have to provide before trial, like anything that we have, and it's not just what we have, it's what the police has, it's constructive possession. So say we don't have it yet because the police haven't given it to us, that's still our fault. And the case could be dismissed. Well, that, this is interesting. Um, are there any other questions? If not, I'll, I'll entertain a, a motion. <sighs> Very good. We got a second from Mr. Mr. Clay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Opposed? Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> and we'll be back in October and November to talk about our full budget. And it's yeah. even worse, I promise. Okay. Let's work on the repeal. Yes. Agreed. Number 11, amended the 2019 Sheriff's Office Budget Administrative Adjustments. <coughs> so, um, we have 11. Yes, sir. Our telephone vendor was operating without a contract for a couple of months. Um, once the contract was out to bid, it came back for another vendor. Um, but he still continued to collect some revenues. So we talked with the county attorney and our in-house attorney, and uh, we drafted a letter, sent it to him. Needless to say, they forwarded back what they owed us at $155,000, with monies that we didn't have budgeted. Um, I don't want to say I hate the term found money, but we'd like to take those. I've already submitted those checks in for transmittal, but we would like to place it in our equipment repair and rental lines. Any questions from the members? Okay, I got a motion, motion from Mr. Joyce, second from Mr. O'Brien. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, moving right along with number 12. Amendment 2019 Sheriff's Office Budget Staff <coughs> Positions. I'd like to eliminate a position of the rank of captain at 83.5, create a position of first sergeant at 76.5. Small cost savings, but it's a cost saving. Any questions? Motion. Okay, I have a motion for Mr. O'Brien. I got a second for Mr. Virgo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank have you. a nice night. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Sheriff. Okay. Um, we're going to continue out of order, and I'm going to allow 
our colleague, Mr. Ward. Yes. <laughs> Come forward on number four. Number four. Let me take my new red bag and I'll move it over <laughs> with my new white bag. <laughs> yes. This must move favorably out of the law committee. And it's local law number C for 2019 and local law of the County of Albany, New York, amending and updating local law number two for 2011 requiring item pricing by retail stores in the County of Albany. Uh, basically, what we're doing is amending and cleaning up our existing item pricing law to allow for technology changes, and it, it actually cleans up the fee, they, the waiver fee. It allows for a waiver application at a fee uh, in, in exchange, and uh, Mr. Cannizzaro has been working on this, correct me if I'm wrong, sure. in exchange, they would have consumer scanners where the uh, individuals would uh, individual customers could scan the items to make sure they're accurate pricing. The, uh, this ha seems to have the uh, official blessing of the convenience stores. They were in the public hearing a couple weeks ago and spoke in favor of it. And I, I believe they're all on board with this. And it, is, it, it does take into account the technology changes that I think most consumers are aware of. <coughs> and uh, I'm sorry, Sean. Are you no, no, go ahead. Um, everything Sean said is absolutely accurate. The only thing I would add is uh, the idea of the majority leader here is to create uh, a new category for small businesses to become involved in this waiver program that they previously would not have uh, because the waiver fee was three thousand dollars. Now, by lowering that fee, uh, there's an expectation of uh, some revenue, you know, twenty to thirty thousand. Uh, coming in from a new category of convenience stores, which will uh, presumably uh, become involved in this new waiver process. Any questions from members? Motion. And a motion from Mr. Clay. I got a second from Mr. Uh, Berger. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Very much. Thank you. All right, now we will now move on to number 13. Uh, I believe this has to be tabled pending the local laws progression. Okay, Mr. Rogers has stated that number 13 uh, is going to be tabled. Okay. <coughs> uh, 14. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Are you? What number are we on now? 14. 14. 14. 2019 Department of Social Services Budget Administrative Adjustments. Yes, we are um, at the end of a five year federal grant, and uh, we did not carry forward money from 2018 into our 2019 budget, and we want to encumber, uh, use that um, unused balance um, so that we may spend it this year and finish up the grant. So we're looking to transfer $63,015 of an unused balance into appropriation line 6010-44420 and revenue line 6010-3604. Any questions? Just a quick question. I didn't quite follow the transaction. This was money that you have not spent from, from what It's a five-year year grant five and year the grant. money we didn't realize the money could be carried from year to year, okay. so we didn't encumber it last year. So we're able to spend that money uh, and finish up our grant this okay. year. Okay, and are we are we able once you close a budget for 2018 to just take money from that year and move it forward, or are we moving it? From 19 to 20, what we what don't do? have the money, it's coming from OTDA. This so is to accept their money, yeah. Basically, they already didn't accept the maximum amount in 2018, so this okay. is the balance of their money. Okay, so this is this is like a topping off, yes, like what happens with UPW, yeah, yeah, yes. uh, yeah, 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 yeah,
I have a motion from second. Mr. Joyce. I got a second from Ms. Rose Bryan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. We're now moving to number 15. Oh, good evening, Commissioner. Good evening. I'm um, amending 2019 Department of Public Works Budget Administrative Adjustments. Yes. Hi. Um, so last year, um, the Albany County Legislature accepted $340,000 in grant money from the Dormitory Authority of New York State. And that grant money was subsequently put into a DPW line in 2018. Due to an oversight, the money was not put into our 2019 budget. So we're requesting that the money be reappropriated into our 2019 budget so that we can proceed with the quiet zone project. Are there any so I sort of have the same question. Yes. Yeah. Um, this this got closed out at the end of 2018. Yeah. So what, yes. What, so what, this what, is to accept the, the the grant again, basically accept the grant funds again. Okay. So it was booked in 2018. Right. right. But the money was never received. Right. Right. Yes. Okay. So it's not like you showed it as. In 2018, in, in your, it wasn't in your fund balances or anything. Exactly. Like that. Yes, there was no encumbrance carryover that okay. probably should have happened with this. Okay. Because it was actually approved in 2018, the project's still going on. You still have the. Yeah. It hasn't started yet, no, as a matter of fact. Yeah. They are at the. Uh, They're at the study stage. Study right. stage. I'm still. familiar with the. I'm just trying to understand. Yes. The revenue has not been booked in this year, nor so that's why we have to bring this back for to get the revenue and appropriations booked for this year. So it will be an appropriation this year, and you will. It got closed out of last year's. Okay. Got it. <laughs> yes, Madam Chair. This is three hundred forty thousand dollars. It's being paid to the railroad. Who's who gets the thirty three hundred forty? It's. Well, it's it's being paid. Well, we're accepting it, and CSX is going to be getting the money for the initial study for the feasibility of the project. So we are so, we're paying the railroad to study how noisy they are. <laughs> you know what? Um, I I have to say I can get back to you on the answers to these questions. Um, Mike Lally was um, here. The short answer the is yes, because they're the only oh. ones who are authorized to do yeah. work on the railroad. So it's basically a sole. It's not so much studying how loud they are, but how to prevent themselves from being so loud. Shouldn't that be a cost of the railroad and not the taxpayer? They're the ones making the noise, according to what you're saying. Well, if railroads make noise. This is a <laughs> yes, this, is, this is a grant that was from right. Right. This, this is, is from the dormitory, dormitory authority. So it's not, uh, you know, county money. Well, I know. Right. I know. People but treat how, state money like it doesn't matter. But it's, <laughs> right. it's a little crazy to me that we pay a railroad to study their own noise rather than saying, well, this is what we've been doing about well, our noise. I think the best this answer is we agree. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, if, we're on, if, if, if we you don't, don't take the, the money, grant, you don't then get it. Then it would be county, ta county yeah. taxpayer money to achieve the same result. So the study is mandated? In order to do any measures related to um, changing the corridor, or in this case, an intersection uh, uh, of, a, of a railroad, you have to have a study. I'm sure everyone can appreciate that railroads are uh, hard to deal with because of their federal regulations. So you need that to actually complete the work. I understand that, uh, um, and I'm going to vote for it, but uh, with disdain, I guess, would be my word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Voting with disdain. Okay, yeah. We have a motion by Mr. Clay, second by Mr. O'Brien. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we are now going to move to number 16. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Gardner. Amending the 2019 Board of Certification District Budget. Overtime. Uh, yes, we are seeking a uh, transfer of $52,000 into our overtime uh, line from our equipment and repair line. Uh, this cost is basically to cover our overtime expenses that are projected through the end of 19. Um, overtime is associated for a variety of different uh, reasons. We've had some emergency repairs in August. Um, we've had a variety of different injuries, which have also resulted in um, over time, and then we also have some retirements that are kind of contributing to that factor as well. So, do I have any questions for me? 
Yes, Mr. Perko. I've just got a curiosity. Have, have we had any severe weather events that have contributed to the overtime? Uh, yes. Um, August in particular, we actually, uh, in the span of a month, um, we lost two of our, of our influent pumps. Um, we got hit with a severe storm in the middle of August where we took in about 30 feet of water in our wet well and flooded out the wet well. So uh, some of that work is associated with getting our influent pumps operational. So yes. Sorry. That's what I thought. So thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Burke. We've got a second from Mr. Clay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <coughs> uh, number 17. Good evening. I'm Jill Delaney. I'm with Discover Albany, the Tourism Promotion Agency for the county. Okay. All right. Number 17. Designating the Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau Incorporated as Albany County's tourist promotion agency to receive tourism, advertising, and promotion grants. Correct. This is just something we do every year. For those who haven't been here with me, you get to see me this time every year. We get approximately $65,000 every year from the state of New York market, New York uh, matching grant program, and we match that out of our general fund, so it's cost neutral for the county, and we use that to promote tourism in Albany County, which in 2018 incidentally generated a billion dollars in direct visitor spending. So it's well worth the approval. <laughs> Yeah, Madam Chair, tell me a little bit more about how we're getting our monies here. When you say promoting tourism, how are we doing it and how are we measuring how we're effective specifically for what you're doing? For what we do? In this grant. This grant, yeah. With this grant, it is often, um, it has to be approved by Alex New York and incorporate their logo, so these are partnership um, promotions. But the goal is to drive people to stay in our hotel rooms and spend money in our county. And so what we do is take advertising out in various um, either um, social media campaigns that we can track um, click-throughs. Um, we've incorporated it even into a brand, new, brand USA marketing program where we advertise to <coughs> Canadian travelers. And we've actually been able to track um, about $700,000 worth of bookings in one year um, through Expedia, through the marketing that we've done with Brand USA, and that's just one program alone that we did at a cost of about $4,000. So what you, you're saying is limited by what the state does, it's, it's, a, it's a joint program? Just this particular piece of our spending, which is a, a small portion of our budget. For the county <coughs> because they're targeting um, Albany County, we, we pitch in basically? Yes, every county in the state, so there are 62 tourism promotion agencies across New York State, right. every county has a designated uh, tourism promotion agency. It's been the Albany County Convention and Visitors Bureau, which is now Discover Albany for three or four decades now. Um, and each year we just need a resolution from the county saying that we can accept this $64,000 matching grant. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Motion. Motion. Yeah, motion is clear. I have a second to Mr. Burke. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, thank you very you. much. Number 18, good evening, Mr. McLaughlin. Good evening, Madam Chair. How are you? Fine. Uh, the next two um, are sale backs to former owners. The first is uh, 133 Lark Street. This is uh, an, actually an operating uh, business uh, who, for some reason, didn't realize they had to pay their taxes, but they provided them to us in uh, certified funds and are uh, requesting uh, the property back. Which All right, so number 18 is authorizing the conveyance of real property located at 133 Lark Street in the city of Albany. Do I have any questions from uh, Mr. Bergdorf? How, how many years did they realize they weren't <laughs> paying their taxes? In this particular instance, five. Holy Jesus. <laughs> it's an operating auto dealership, so there's a... a it's a, an operating... Auto dealership. They provided us upwards of $100,000 in back taxes, fees, and interest. Welcome aboard. <laughs> I consider better myself. All right. Any other questions? Can I get a motion? Can I get a motion for Mr. Graham? We got a second. At least five years. All those in favor? I'd be high. Uh, he's knocking on my question. door. Now, number 19. Be, be, be. We send in the authorization for the closed. The land bank would get my own. To, to count it. 
164 Oak Street, uh, pursuant to resolution number 399 for 2019 and authorizing the conveyance of 164 Orange Street in the city of Orange. Yep, so this is a similar sale back to former owner. This one had progressed to the point where we actually uh, authorized its sale to the land bank recently, and uh, then we were approached by the owner with certified funds, so we're rescinding that authorization to the land bank and conveying it back to the former owner. Uh, his delinquency was in the ballpark of $18,000. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, second from. Mr. O'Brien, thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. 19, uh, number 20. So this is a basic clerical error um, correction. This would typically go to the Albany School District. However, it was a delinquent tax, so it was paid here to the <coughs> county. Therefore, we need the legislator's authorization. It's simply for a refund in the amount of the STAR benefit. Okay, thank you, Ms. Davis. I'm authorizing a refund of real property tax in the city of Albany. Do you have any questions from any members? Motion. All right, a motion for Mr. Clay. Second. I have a second from Mr. Keck. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Opposed? Opposed? Number one. <coughs> Number one. Number one is table. I have any questions on it. Number two is also table after the And Number three is also table at the request to sponsor. And number six. We did call. Oh, no. Did you know? Excuse me. Okay. We did four. At least the air conditioner is working tonight. No. It wasn't before. <laughs> just kick it. Yeah, number no five, which is also table. Yep. All right. Are you table? Okay. Um. Um. Six. Number six. Oh, there we go. Just Mario. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, at the last meeting. Chairwoman Willingham had asked if anybody had any questions concerning Resolution 217 to please submit them, and uh, she would she would work to uh, obtain answers for us. So um, I did get a list of uh, questions which we submitted a week ago Monday sorry, morning sorry, um, for myself, Mr. Bergdorf, Mr. Grimm, Mr. Mendez, and uh, we haven't received any of the answers to these questions yet. I don't Chair, have you received any any of the answers to these questions yet? No, we have not. You have not. All right. Um, is this? I think uh, it's important that you do receive the answers to these questions. I mean, Mr. McLaughlin is here, and, and he spoke uh, on behalf of the county executive's office um, at the last, at the personnel meeting, and um, God, he said he helped to facilitate getting these answers, the questions to these answers. Yeah, I'll say the same thing to the committee that I said the last, uh, Madam Chair, that uh, I had had a conversation with uh, staff from, uh, from the Minority Caucus. It was very helpful. I received the memo, so we're working on that memo, and we'll endeavor to have them to you by the uh, by the next meetings. Okay. So, so are you willing to table this before? You know? No, I want to. I want to move forward with this. I still want to move forward with this. So, uh, uh, okay, just so that I do have an understanding, was it in another committee? Personnel. Uh, personnel. So it was tabled, it was by the personnel. Okay, so it was just tabled by the personnel committee. Uh, yes, we uh, recognize Mr. Mendick. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd just like to remind the committee and the chair, according to our own rules, Rule 23, which refers to the referral, referrals to committee, it says, and I quote, said local law or resolution shall be returned to the floor of the legislature for action of the whole body by the second regular meeting of the body or within 60 days, whichever is longer. We are reached that point. It was required that this resolution go to the floor. Okay, I, I would like to have um, uh, the majority council respond, please. Sure, so uh, looking at our rules, and I'm gonna try to be as when it is I can with this, but it's sort of a long answer. Our rules are read in tandem with Robert's rules. Our rules defer to Robert's rules when they are silent on a particular topic. 
Last month, we had a unique circumstance occur. We had, a mo when this item came up, we had a motion to table, which was made by Mr. Clay. Motion to table by committee. That motion tied. We had a 3-3 tie, which under our rules, which defer to Robert rules, a tie in the Robert's rules context is the, is the same as no action being taken. That is not an affirmative action. A tie is no nothing happened in essence. <clears throat> what happened next is Mr. Mendick made a motion to reconsider that motion. That motion also died. Uh, again, no affirmative action was taken. At that point, there were no other motions made. There was no motion made by any member of the committee to move this out in any way, um, which led to, <clears throat> so, this, so you also have to, so let me just finish that thought. Because there was no affirmative action taken, this action at that point, this committee had not taken any action at that point. No affirmative action was taken. To Mr. Mendick's point about the 60 days, the 60 days continues to run under our rules. However, committees are always entitled to table an item by committee, which did not occur last month. This committee retains the ability to table this item by committee uh, when you read Robert's rules, which our rules defer to, and our rules in tandem. The 60 days is one issue. However, the right of a committee to table is a separate issue running parallel. And that is the prerogative of this committee to table it today. Madam Chairman, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I hate to argue with counsel. This is very clear. It says 60 days. The committee has 60 days in which to do whatever they're going to do with it. The intent is clear. After 60 days, it goes back to the legislature. Whether, and I will not disagree with the, the learned counsel that the you have the right to table this, but that's within the framework of the 60 days. It's 60 days are, it overrides any other consideration. So Madam Chairman, this has to go back to the legislature for action at the next meeting. And just to be clear, I mean, you also have to look at our rules in line with the practice of this body, the historical practice of this body, which is binding under legal precedent. Um, 60 days, while it's in the rules, there are a number of circumstances where membership will go well beyond 60 days. Uh, it is not a mandatory trigger when you hit 60 days that it must mandatorily return. There are a number of circumstances that allow a member at their own motion to for example, table by sponsor uh, indefinitely, which will get you behind 60 days, uh, as well as other parliamentary procedure. The 60 days, that trigger in our practice is there when there has already been a tabling by committee where it becomes mandatory. If there is a tabling by committee and 60 days have run, Mr. Mendick would be correct. However, there has never been a tabling by committee, and because of that, this committee retains the ability to take such action. So what I would like to uh, say, too, is that you, you put in the request last week. You haven't received a response as of yet. Um, we had a very lively discussion last month on this. And I think before we do move it out, we, we really need the answers to those questions. Um, I mean, you, you, if you can provide us some information that can be, um, you know, verified, that's one thing. But because all of those questions that were raised in, by you and others, I think the committee deserves uh, an opportunity to see the response from the um, executives of the office. So at, because of that, <coughs> you have said you, uh, you would not take with, but I, I would call for a motion on this right now. I'm going to motion. Yeah. Okay. So there is a motion to take with. Can I get a second? Okay, I got a second from Mr. Mayo. All right. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. No. Mr. Graham. Okay, so I have two, two opposed, Mr. Grimm and Mr. Mendick. So the motion passes that we take with. Table by committee, correct? Table by committee. Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, so on the number seven, which is also... So, Madam Chair, when 
the, the, the yes. When the answers to the questions come, we will all be getting them. We're going to get the answers to the questions right prior to the next meeting when well, they arrive. Um, Mike said. I believe that that's a question that Mr. Bachman. You said. I'm sorry, I missed you. Said you said by next time, right? Yes. Thank you. So number eight, oh seven, seven. So number seven is table. We are now on to number eight. One of the executives people for eight and nine. Oh, good Mr. Riley. You know, Madam Chairwoman, how are you? Very good. Okay, number eight, we send in the authorization to convey real property pursuant to resolution number 260 of 2017 and authorizing the conveyance of 47 Maple Ridge Avenue in the city of Albany. So as you just said, this is to rescind the original authorization, which would have transferred this to the land bank. We have a uh, an interested party here who has provided very detailed uh, plans for the parcel. She secured financing. Um, all the details are in there, and we view that this would be the best use of the house under the current advance plan. Are there any questions? If not, can I have a motion? Motion. I have a motion from Mr. Clay. Can I get a second? I got a second from Mr. Mayo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Number nine. Authorizing the conveyance of a parcel of real property known as Van Lees Point Road, located in the town of Bethlehem. So, Madam Chairwoman, this is an authorization to return the property to its previous owners. The previous owner is actually deceased. This would go to his wife and his heirs. Um, the full amount of $106,000 in back taxes and interest has been placed on deposit with the secured funds. Um, again, this is probably the easiest transfers that we do is when it goes back to the previous owner they pay the full amount due and everybody's happy. Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.